So um, today we are going to be taking a look at how to run a causal impact analysis using the R programming language. You don't need to know a whole lot about R programming language, but you do need to know uh, how to run some basic functions. And there are a lot of resources online uh, that teach you how to do that, so I won't dive into that. Um, but I will uh, explain what causal impact analysis is, and I'll walk you through why it's important. Um, so essentially, causal impact analysis is uh, when we want to look at if an action that we took had an effect on an outcome metric. Um, so let's say we, we started an advertising campaign or we made a website change. Uh, we want to know if that had an effect on, an, on the outcome. Um, and sometimes that's going to be pretty obvious. You'll be able to see it kind of just, you know, with the naked eye looking at either a chart or in a spreadsheet. Uh, but sometimes it's not so clear. And we want to be sure that um, our action had a statistically significant effect on the metric that we're looking at. Um, so I've made a little test data set here um, with some, some data that we're going to look at. And uh, our scenario is that we are running an advertising campaign um, that is targeting females that are above the age of 40. And we want to know if the uh, number of purchases that that audience took or that uh, audience made has increased after we started our campaign. Um, so what we'll need to, to run this analysis is a couple of different metrics. Um, purchases for audience A, which will be our audience of females above the age of 40. Um, and then we need a couple, you can have as many uh, different columns as you want for, for other uh, metrics. These are going to be used to create predictive models. Um, but we want these metrics, we want to make sure that these metrics were not affected by our, our um, campaign. Um, because we want to see what would happen if we never ran that campaign. We want to make a prediction of what that would look like. Um, so let's say purchases for audience B, let's say audience B are male purchasers, and let's say audience C are uh, females below the age of 40. And so we are not targeting either of these groups with our campaign. There would be no, no you know, uh, change in their purchasing behavior based on when, or when our campaign was started. So this is going to help us build some predictive models. Um, so let's uh, say that we started our advertising campaign on June 21st. Um, that'll be the day that we want to you know, kind of split our data by um, to see if there is an effect of the purchases before June 21st and the purchases on and after June 21st. Um, so let's switch over to R here. I've already downloaded this data. Um, let's clean this up a little bit. Um, okay, so what we want to do is, uh, this is all the code we have to, to write in R. It's very simple, um, and we don't really have to get into, to, into the heavy lifting of, of any of the math or anything like that behind this. Um, we just have to know how to run these, these functions. Um, so what we're going to be using is the causal impact package. So if you've never installed that package in R before, you'll have to run this line, install packages, causal impact, and that will install the package on your machine. And then once you've done that, you have to load the package using uh, this function, library causal impact. So we run that, that loads our package for us. Um, and next we're going to read in our test data. Um, let's clean this up as well. You can... Uh, uh, save this in, in whatever file or workspace is most convenient for you, um, but just make sure that it's connected to, to your R, 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 R project. Um, so let's read that in, and here you can see it's loaded into our environment, our purchase data, um, and it's essentially the exact same thing that we just saw in uh, Excel. So um, next, um, what we, we don't need is we don't need this day column in here. Um, all we need are the, the columns um, that we want to analyze. So the first column, the leftmost column, is going to be our metric of interest um, that we want to see if we had an impact on. And any subsequent columns um, to the right of that first column are going to be the uh, metrics that were not impacted by our action. Um, so we really only need these three columns, but I like to bring in this day column um, to help us identify what the pre-period and the post-period are. 
Um, so we started our um, campaign on June 21st right here. So that's line 31. So the pre-period is going to go from row one to row 30. And as you can see, I've specified that right here. And so we enter that in. And then the post period is going to go from line 31 to the end of our data set, which is line 50. So I'll specify that as well. And then we can run this command up here um, to just get rid of the day column altogether. Now we'll see, we just have the columns of our metrics and that's all we need to run our analysis. So next we are going to run the causal impact function with three parameters, the first being our data, our data set here, purchases. Um, and then the next is gonna be our pre-period, which we specified, and our post-period, which we specified. So we can run that. And that's all it takes right there. That's, that's the analysis run. Um, and so what we can do to look at the outcomes of that analysis is we run this function, plot, and then I call it impact just because it's very straightforward um, and that's what we're looking for. And then that'll put out these graphs right here. Okay, so this first graph up top is going to show us um, a couple of different things. Uh, the horizontal, or the, uh, sorry, the vertical dotted line right here is the point in time that our um, event took place. Um, so this is um, denoting what the pre-period is to the left of this line and the post-period is to the right of that line. Um, the solid black line right here is going to be the actual observations that we had of our metric of interest, the purchases for audience A. Um, and so these are the actual observations that we saw. Um, the dotted line here, the horizontal dotted line, is going to be the prediction of what would have happened, what would our metric have looked like um, if, if we never ran a campaign, if nothing, you know, if, if we never started that campaign and it had no impact on our audience. And so this is basically just a regression model. And that's what the, um, that's why we include audiences that were not affected by our campaign. So we can see what the trends of audiences that were not affected by our campaign look like, and we can create a predictive model about it. Um, down below here, this middle graph is showing us the differences between the actual um, observations and the predicted observations. So the predicted ob observation is this um, kind of gray horizontal line right here. And then these dotted lines are showing us the differences between our actual and the predicted. You can see that the axis on this top graph is slightly different from the axis on this bottom graph. And that's because this top graph is showing us the absolute numbers, um, just the, the total counts. And this um, middle graph is showing us the differences. Um, and then the bottom here is showing us the cumulative effect. Um, so it's adding every day together and you can see it's getting larger and larger day by day. Um, and so we'll, we'll look at kind of the number counterpart to this in just a second. So let's close this out. And now here we can run this function, summary impact. And that's going to uh, output this uh, bit of information right here. And so what we can see is that the actual um, outcome, we saw that the average number of purchases in our audience A um, was 56 purchases per day. Um, and the actual number of total purchases, and this is after our, um, our uh, event. This is after our, we've launched the campaign. So the, the, to the average number of purchases after the campaign is 56. The total number of purchases after the campaign is 1,117. Um, and then below that, we can see the predictions. What, what would these numbers have looked like if we never launched a campaign. And so we can see that the average number of daily purchases would have been 45 and the cumulative total number of purchases would have been just over 900, 904. Um, and so then below that we have a 95% confidence interval. And so what a confidence interval is, is essentially when we run our causal impact function, 
it's creating a bunch of different models all at once. And each time it creates one of those models, the predicted outcome, uh, you know, if we never ran that campaign, um, the predicted outcome is going to be slightly different. And so it's going to create a, a distribution curve. I'm sure you've all, you know, probably seen one of those before at some point. Um, and that means that 95% uh, of the outcomes of all those different models fell between these two numbers. So 95% of all the predictions that it made um, of what would have happened if we never launched that campaign are going to be between 42 and 48. Uh, and you'll notice that 45 is right in the middle of those and that's at the peak of that curve. That's the number that occurred most frequently out of all the different models it's made. And then the same thing goes for this side as well. You'll notice that 904 is right in the middle of these two numbers. Um, so below that, we have the absolute effect. And essentially, this area, this section right here lets us quantify the amount of change that our campaign drove, the amount of additional purchases that our campaign drove. Um, so on average, the daily average, we actually drove uh, 11 more purchases than would have happened if we never ran this campaign. Uh, and that's a daily average in total we, for the period that we're analyzing, um, in total, the uh, number of purchases that we drove from the launch of this campaign was 213. And then we have the confidence intervals for those as well. Um, and then the relative effect is essentially the same thing as the absolute effect, but it just puts it into uh, percentage terms. So we can say that our campaign drove a 24% increase in purchases. Um, and this, this uh, section down here is uh, essentially just telling us um, what are the, ch what are the, what's the possibility that this increase in purchases happened just by chance, because that can happen sometimes and it can lead to false attribution, which we don't want. Um, so when we have this P value here um, at a very, very low number, that's telling us that the, the, the probability that this increase happened just by chance is, is very, very low. And so we can be very, very, we can be pretty confident in the fact that our action, our campaign launch um, was the, the driver of this increase. Um, and another cool feature of this package is that you can run this summary impact with a extra parameter of report and it will output kind of a, a written version of, of um, the um, outcomes that we saw up here. So it kind of puts it into, into prose so that you can, you know, copy it into a PowerPoint or a report or something like that. And it just kind of helps, you know, if you don't necessarily know how to, how to write it out into words. Um, it's essentially giving you the same exact outcomes, um, but just in a, in a slightly more readable way. Um, so yeah, it, causal impact analysis is, is super useful for a variety of different things. You know, maybe you're trying to, to you know, talk with a client or um, and try and tell them you know the effects that this campaign that we ran, uh, you can quantify it and, and say we drove this many extra purchases, and you can you know maybe figure out the value that each purchase has, and you can say our campaign actually drove this much extra revenue, um, so you can really kind of put it almost into into a dollar amount. Um, which is which is very very useful it kind of lets you know what is working and what isn't working so you're not just you know barking up a tree that's that's really not producing that much fruit um so it's 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 very valuable to to run this analysis I, i've seen some um some good outcomes with it myself and i really hope you guys give it a try um, and thank you so much for watching